good morning and welcome my dear medical students in this lecture i will talk about the cardiovascular system cardio vascular system also known as the circulatory system as the name indicate cardio cardia means heart means pumping organ vascular means it comprises the vessels the cardiovascular system or the circulatory system is having a closed tubular system it is a closed tubular system comprises the highly specialized connective tissue it comprises the highly specialized connective tissue known as blood it comprises the central pumping organ also known as the heart heart is a muscular central pumping organ and it is a very very important organ of the human body with brain and liver because it is supplied by the end arterial arterial system which are having almost no anastomosis and blockage in these arteries is fatal for human life so with brain heart is very very important organ of the human body the third component of the cardiovascular system is the blood vessels having arteries veins and the capillaries so a closed tubular system of the body which is having the very special connective tissue known as the blood the central muscular pumping organ the heart and the closed tubes bringing or conveying blood away from the heart the arteries and the thin walled large calibered tubes bringing blood back to heart are known as the veins and the interconnecting veins between the arteries and the veins thin walled tiny vessels known as capillaries so cardiovascular system is formed by all three components first of all i will talk about the functions of the cardiovascular system the functions 
of the cardiovascular system many important functions are carried by the cardiovascular system the first important function is gaseous transportation the oxygen and carbon dioxide are transported by the blood in the closed tubes heart pumps the deoxygenated blood having low blood concentration to the lungs and after oxygenation in the lungs heart pumps the oxygenated blood to the whole body so it transports the gases oxygen and carbon dioxide o2 and co2 the second important function of the cardiovascular system is the transportation of nutrients human body survives by some macronutrients like the lipids carbohydrates and proteins as well as some micronutrients are needed to survive and for the metabolic activities of the human cells and tissues the cardiovascular system transport these nutrients from the git to the different organs and cells of the human body so transportation of the nutrients the third important function is the removal of the waste products of the me metabolic waste products like the urea and ammonia in especially in lower animals so metabolic waste products are excreted by the cardiovascular system distribution and transportation of the hormones body is having multiple endocrine organs or i can say multiple endocrine glands the glands which are not having their own duct and the cells of endocrine system are secreting the hormones directly in the blood flow so transportation of these hormones endocrine hormones secreted by the pituitary thyroid adrenaline etc are transported by the cardiovascular system so fourth function is distribution and transportation of hormones the fifth function is the temperature regulation of the human body temperature regulation by redistribution of the cutaneous blood supply and the protection
the protection of human body by its phagocytic function of the blood especially the leukocytes play important role in body protection by providing innate or natural immunity and the humoral immunity so protection is done by the leukocytes besides these all important functions blood is doing all other functions of transportation like blood is also responsible for the infections inside the body it is transporting the bacteria the protozoa and the other parasites in the human body from one place to other place and the metastatic cells when there is some malignant tumor or malignancy blood is transporting the malignant cells from one place to the other place and the transportation of medications drugs are taken for treatment of some diseases blood acts as a transportation medium for these medications so these are the functions of the cardiovascular system so what is cardiovascular system here it is the human body it is having head neck the upper extremities and the trunk the thoracic part in the midline in left two third and right two third of midline there is a central pumping muscular organ known as heart it is having distribution vessels known as arteries so cardiovascular system is made up of the heart or central pumping organ and the vessels the arteries or distributing vessels and the veins or the collecting vessels and the veins are bringing back the deoxygenated blood to the heart which is pumped to the lungs for the oxygenation so the cardiovascular system comprises the central muscular pumping organ the heart distribution vessels known as arteries bringing the blood or i can say oxygenated blood away from the heart and the collecting vessels bringing back the oxygenated blood the de deoxygenated blood to the heart the heart is pumping 5 liters 
of blood volume per minute or I can say the farthest part of the body receives blood and blood return back within one minute from the heart to the heart so bl blood vessels and the central pumping organ are forming the components of the cardiovascular system but the conveying medium or transportation medium is the blood first of all i will talk about the blood not in very detail it is a separate topic for lecture but initial knowledge of blood is mandatory to understand the cardiovascular system so first of all i will talk about the blood what is blood blood is highly or i can say unique modified connective tissue you have heard about the loose and dense connective tissue about the cartilage about the bones but this is highly specialized liquid connective tissue transports the gases transports the nutrients transports the metabolic waste products and protect the body from the external infections and foreign bodies by phagocyting and engulfing the bacteria and viruses transporting the hormones especially the endocrine hormones and it is working to maintain the homeostasis inside the body so blood is made up of two types of components one is the cellular component or also known as packed cell volume and the acellular or non cellular part also known as the plasma so blood is formed by a cellular and a non cellular component the cellular component is having three types of cells so first of all i will talk about the cellular component erythrocytes also known as rbc or the red blood cells these are disc like cells non nuclear rbcs or red blood cells are not having nuclei these cells bind the gases that is oxygen and carbon dioxide and transport these gases from one place to other place and these red blood cells receive their nutrition by the anaerobic anaerobic respiration because these cell are cells are not having nuclei so anaerobic respiration because it is not having nucleus so no enzymes for the aerobic respiration so red blood cells disc like cells having a diameter of about 7.5 micron receive their 
nutrition from the anaerobic respiration due to lack of nuclei the second type of cells are the leucocytes the leucocytes are also known as white blood cells the white blood cells or the leucocytes are the cells less in number but larger in size than the red blood cells the leucocytes are two types the granular component and the non granular or a granular component so it is having the granular which is again having three types of cells the neutrophils the neutrophil neutrophils are having multi lobed nucleus the nucleus of the neutrophils is multi lobed having multiple lobes like this the granules inside the neutrophils neither take the eosin which stains pink or red nor it takes the hematoxylin the eosin and hematoxylin are not staining the granules of the neutrophils so these cells are known as neutrophils because the granules of these cells are neutral neither taking the eosin nor the hematoxylin which stains purple or blue so the granular cells are having three types of cells the neutrophils which are having multi lobed nuclei and the granules which are not taking neither eosin nor hematoxylin and these cells are playing important role in the phagocytosis that is engulfing the foreign bodies bacteria and viruses and these are the cells reaching at the site of tissue and cellular injury rapidly so these are first cells reaching at the site of injury these cells are forming the part of natural or the innate injury innate immunity innate or natural immunity so neutrophils impart the innate or the natural immunity to the to the human body by engulfing the bacteria viruses and other foreign particles entering in the human body so this is the first granular cell the neutrophil the second granular cell is the eosinophil as the name indicates eosinophils are stained by the eosin 
pink or red in color so stained by eosin and these cells are having bilobed nuclei and these cells are secreting the histaminase enzyme histaminase hydrolyze or destroy the histamine and the other allergic mediator so these cells play important role in the allergic conditions and the number of eosinophils increase in the allergic conditions uh, like the hay fever asthma allergic dermatitis and this condition is known as eosinophilia the third type of cells are basophils the basophils as the name indicate takes the hemotoxylin stain blue or purple in color these are eosinophile like cells but taking the pink eosinophils are taking pink basophils are taking the blue or purple hematoxylin stain these cells are releasing the anti coagulant heparin anti coagulant heparin these cells are secreting the histamine these cells are releasing the 5 hydroxy tryptamine the histamine and 5 ht 5 hydroxy tryptamine so these are the mediator of the allergy and basophils play important or vital role in the allergic conditions like hay fever allergic rhinitis asthma allergic conjunctivitis and allergic dermatitis or i can say these are mediators of the immediate type of hypersensitivity reaction known as hypersensitivity reaction first or also known as the immediate type of hypersensitivity reaction or also known as anaphylactic reaction anaphylactic reaction so these cells play important role in the hypersensitivity type first reaction also known as anaphylactic reaction or also known as immediate type of hypersensitivity reaction so these are three types of granular leukocytes neutrophils eosinophils and basophils the second types of the leukocytes are the a granular or non granular cells the a granular or non granular leukocytes the agrelo sites or non granular 
leukocytes the monocytes having horse shoe like nucleus and forming the